Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Today we are here with the Dev De Hevelin. De Hevelin. I uh, hope I pronounced that correctly. A uh, Canadian aircraft, I believe, by Sobo. Um, this has a uh, cruise altitude, uh, cruise speed, I should say, of 176 knots. Max altitude of uh, 24,800 feet. Seven hours of duration. 1,136 nautical miles. It does not have an autopilot. Today's video, we're going to be taking it up for a test flight, seeing how it handles, how it flies. And uh, overall, just the levels of performance of the aircraft. We'll do a stall test, and uh, this, uh, I believe, is for short takeoffs and short landings. It's a cargo configuration aircraft. I think it's also uh, used. Uh, here it is, actually, on the ground. Let's take a look at from the outside. It comes with a bunch of different liveries as well. Uh, which I'll show you guys at the end of the video. You probably saw some of them in the beginning. Not, I think it's about eight, nine. I think it's about eight or nine different liveries. But nevertheless, this is uh, one that I like. Beautiful aircraft. It's very well modeled. And uh, yeah, we're going to start it up and take it for a little bit of a flight. Let's jump inside. I just want to show you some of the features here. You might have already seen this plane. I don't 100% know if it's been out for a little bit. So we'll go ahead and turn the cargo door on and open it up here. You can actually see it starting to open up back there. It's very well modeled on the inside as well as the outside. Let's take a look at the back. Very, very nice. Super cool aircraft. I believe you can open and close that in flight as well, which makes it even cooler. Um, all right, there you go. Let's uh, go ahead and close it back up, and then we'll get this plane started up and take it for a ride. It does come with a checklist. So in order to turn it on, this is the main power for the cargo door. Even without the plane running, it will open and close, which is pretty cool to see. Let's take a look at that thing closing there. There is an override, I think, to have that thing come all the way to the ground as well. And then we are closed up, so we'll go ahead and put these back to the off position. Close those and turn the power off to the cargo door there. And now we'll jump inside here. Um, most of your power switches for the startup are in this direction generally. And you got a fuel pump. Um, but in this, for some reason, it's not a, it's a very well modeled plane. But not 100% uh, everything works correctly. Uh, you would probably normally need to turn the fuel pumps on, but it will start without it. These are your panel lighting here at the bottom, so we'll turn those on to see how they work. These are some of your switches for your nav and wing lights and all that, and your landing lights are up here, and your taxi light. Um, so first things first, it does come with a checklist. If you want to go through the checklist, we can here. So we can bring out the checklist before startup. Obviously, it's the usual. Um, let's just go check, 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 check. Mags are going to be on, which they're not right now. So now they are. These are your mags up here, which we have to turn on. We'll check that. Cut off uh, for all extents and purposes. We will actually bring um, that full. It would take a little bit of a cheat. I think in the real aircraft, if you did that, you would probably damage the engines you're supposed to introduce slowly. Uh, but for all extensive purposes for this video, since this is just a, a simulator, we'll uh, be okay with that. It should, shouldn't really affect it, so we'll put prop RPM all the way to full. Thrust levers uh, will crack open slightly here. Now this little lever here, we want to always make sure that's your gust lock. We have to push that forward. Otherwise, you will not get full power out of this plane, and you will go nowhere. Believe me, I've tried it before. All right, landing gear is down. Yes, okay, that is uh, definitely something I want to make sure. Okay, so with that being said, we should be good to go here. Let's jump down to the power panel, um, which is right underneath the... Uh, I guess, I don't know how to click to get rid of this, but... Uh, We'll just stay under here. So 
let's see what it tells us next. Engine startup, clear prop. Let's, okay, props are clear. Battery switch. Boom. On. Um, we'll put the nav on. Beacon on. And now fuel bump to norm. Bahamas nine or seven one, hold position, caution, other traffic. Um, prime. Hold position, Bahamas nine or seven one. Fuel pump to normal. Oh yeah. We'll put both fuel pumps to normal here. Oil on. There we go. Okay, let's try the next one. Alright, there we go. Engines are started. And, uh... Put the heat on there. Now this does have a feather auto, which uh, we won't be putting on until takeoff right here. Uh, we won't necessarily need that. Let's just say for all extensive purposes, we did everything. And uh, set radios. are Now radios are down here, and they do... Um, automatically are on, I believe, and set. They're, I don't think you can really move them too much and I think this actually moves forward I'm not 100% sure how I believe it does take off position that's your trim just look in here the radio stacks oh there it goes okay so you can slide it up or slide it out so the person can get into the jump seat or the uh, flight deck here so, alright, I think we should be up and running at this point. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get the landing lights on, taxi lights on, and uh, let's go ahead and take the brake off and take it for a little bit of a cruise here. We'll put uh, some weather on just to give it a little bit more realization. I don't know what's going on, but we are in the Bahamas today, and we're going to just, uh, whoops, watch out for Georgie there. Um, take this thing for a spin. Put the takeoff flaps on. It's a pretty nice aircraft. Handles well. Uh, as far as steering, it's not bad. It's got pretty good views. Let's let the altimeter there. It doesn't have autopilot, uh, the nav works, uh, but it is a... I just had somebody take off there. Alright, taxiway alpha. This is a pretty beautiful plane to fly on. Very short takeoff. I like it. I don't know. It's cool. The only thing that stinks about it is uh, it doesn't have the autopilot, but you can use the autopilot on the flight uh, stream itself if you want to to um, the autopilot like this. If you go here, you can actually use the AI auto, and that will fly you to your destination as well until you get there, and then you can take it off and hand fly it to your approach if you wanted to do it that way or you can just hand fly it the whole way which is also a fun thing it's not a very difficult plane to fly it does lean slightly to the left um, during your flight so you will have to uh, definitely 
stay in the seat and flying it. Um, I learned that the hard way also. Uh, it does have this over uh, view here where uh, we have the cabin pressures outside, I guess, and uh, all this beautiful lighting. So it's really cool to do flights with this airplane. And it flies relatively good. I mean, I really enjoy flying this plane. Uh, I'm gonna probably do a stream with it later today or hopefully if it doesn't get too late in the day, I'm gonna try to do it later on. Um, but this is uh, definitely, for, for such a good price point, this is definitely a great aircraft to pick up because I think it's a, if I remember correctly, I think it's about $15, $16. And uh, for what you get, it's I would say this is definitely worth worth it for sure you know not everything works but uh hey for the amount that you pay for such a nice aircraft and it flies great and it's cool to just look at you know and you could really do some short takeoffs and landings with it it's a cargo plane I think they also use it for uh, military applications as well which is uh, why we have uh, I believe there's a um, infrared light in here as well for nighttime. So that's also kind of a cool feature to have. We're just going to head down uh, to the end here. And uh, you go ahead and depart. We'll do a little bit of a flight. Uh, try to fly around the area here bring it up to about 3,000 feet start our stall testing try different things out with this aircraft and then hopefully if everything goes well we will safely land back in the Bahamas here in Nassau and uh, put the plane away but uh, I have flew this uh, once or twice um, off stream and uh, I tried it once on stream but I crashed it because I didn't uh, pay attention to it as much as you should okay here we go well we're not really lined up with center line yet but whatever this line center line here Okay. All right, here we go. Fans and throttles. You could already feel this plane wants to take off. And we're up. Looks like a positive rate to me. Super cool the way the gear comes up too. And we'll go ahead and start bringing the flaps up here. Is type one mile southwest of Nassau, 300 feet. Request flight following. Liberty 757, Nassau approach. Squawk 7142. Squawk 7142, Liberty 757. Liberty 757 radar contact, one mile west of NASA, 700 feet. Altimeter 30 decimal, one zero. Roger, Liberty 757. Pretty cool plane to fly, that's for sure. Alright, we'll climb up to uh, 3,000 feet. We'll go over towards the ocean here. Your radio stacks are here. You could change to ILS one and two and also nav and GPS mode depending on whatever you want to use here so if you want to use your nav radios you can and uh, fly to a destination you just have to pick up your nav radio and it will it will pretty much line up it's not a bad airplane that's for sure let's take a look outside here Beautiful day in the Bahamas. Very nice looking water. 
right, let's just turn along the coastline here so we don't lose uh, the Bahamas. We're at uh, 2,500 feet and climbing. I'm just going to turn here. Level off. Almost reaching 3,000 feet soon. Like I said, I think this does hold a little bit of a, a right, uh, left wing. It, it tends to be left wing heavy for the most part. But it's a beautiful airplane to fly, that's for sure. We just took off from uh, the airport there. Continuing. All right. We got enough uh, altitude there. So what we'll do now is we'll just uh, pitch up and uh, put it into a stall here. Leading back to 80 knots, 60 knots. Keep pulling, keep pulling. There's the stall warning. Left wing's getting heavy on me. I'm pulling back, pulling back, and left wing has dropped. Okay. Now let's see if we can recover this plane here. Okay, we recovered. 2,600 feet recover. Okay, let's try uh, another stall here. It looks like uh, this plane definitely drops a lot of altitude when stalling. Let's go ahead and put it into a left bank here. There we go. Outside view of it. Okay. Let's try to repool, pull out of there. That's terrifying, huh? Okay. Try that again. We're gonna go back up to 3,000 feet and start a right uh, stall. Um, I was told uh, in the comments uh, how to do this correctly, and I totally forgot. But let's try it again. Pulling back, pulling back, and right wing has dropped. Jeez. Let's co recover here. So it is recoverable, which is great. And check it out. Let's just do a touch and go and see how it handles. I'm going to pull back on the sticks here put the full power back in put a bit of flaps in let's slow it down drop the gear Since we already lined up with the runway, this was uh, kind of a perfect opportunity to try a landing. It, nevertheless, this is a great aircraft for the price range. And super fun to fly. It's not too bad, you know. Um, but you do have to hand fly it. There is no autopilot. That's the downfall. However, uh, it's definitely not bad. That is the auto um, feathering which uh, we did not use today since we're just kind of doing some maneuvers uh, that you can use during longer durations of flight once you get it airborne for a while there. Nevertheless, it's pretty cool aircraft, you know. You could really get it to some slow speeds as well, too. For being such a big aircraft, it's super, super uh, floaty. I mean, this thing will really, like, uh, as you can see here, I got nose down, and it still just does not want to go anywhere, you know. So you got to keep that in mind when flying it, you know, for your approach. That uh, it's going to definitely take a little bit of time to get down, and you can start flaring and just dropping out that speed. You can really butter the landings with this one because it's such a uh, 
functional, smooth operating machine here. You could just let it float out for ground effect there. Pull back slightly. And barely even notice you touch down. There you go. Touching down almost at like 60 knots. Unbelievable. Now let's see for the short takeoff how that goes. Now the flaps are all the way down. Power is all the way up here. And we're up. So there you go. I mean, beautiful plane to fly and to handle. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn back around here and try one more landing and then we'll, we'll put this aircraft away. Really I just wanted to show you how uh, easy it is to fly and handle and also to take off. Let's see if we can even make it back with the... short um there it is without putting it into a stall here all right oops I think we should still be able to land, really. Let me just get over this aircraft here on 28. It's not a bad airplane, though. Overall, like, it's very easy to land, that's for sure. So, uh, anyway, I just uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, review. Um, I know it wasn't much uh, but it does fly really well it handles great you can really butter your landings and get better at landing with this aircraft as well it's super cool for that you know really nothing to it uh, I'm sure this will be great for uh, use in a situation as far as like if you want to do some rainforest flights or any kind of terrain stuff like that this would probably be a good one to use for that kind of stuff like short finals uh, and things of that nature. I really think this would be a useful aircraft for their uh, smaller runways and different challenges. Um, this would be a fun one to use for sure because uh, you can really, really get it at a low speed uh, for such a big aircraft and a low speed. I mean, and it's got pretty good range too, you know, so you got some uh, benefits uh, there, you know. Um, so I would definitely suggest uh, this aircraft to anybody who's interested in buying it because it's not bad at all. Let's go ahead and park it up and shut it down and uh, end this. And I'll show you a couple of the liveries that come with it and, and that's it. Just take a look at this plane, man. Beautiful. Don't hit the Kodiak. It's another plane we have that we have not used in a little while. Let's park it uh, right next to the Kodiak here. Okay, there we go, 
Let's uh, shut it down here. Definitely not a bad aircraft. Super fun to fly. Super fun to handle. If you didn't pick it up, consider it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Or smash the thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. Let's go ahead and jump out of here real quick. I'll just show you the liveries before we wrap this up. And uh, yeah, if there's any other aircrafts you guys would like to see, this is an aviation enthusiast channel. We do flight reviews. We do live streams. Uh, we also do some plane spotting as well. And um, here we are. So yeah, there's a four, five, six, seven. You got the Army one. Um, the Canadian one, which this is a Canadian aircraft, I believe. Um, the blue and yellow. Uh, this is the one we were using. This one's also very nice. And uh, yeah, whatever livery you, your heart desires here. Plus, I'm sure they have other ones you can purchase. Anyway, uh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, DHC-4. Beautiful aircraft. I love it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like I said... Um, consider subscribing and uh, thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next review peace thanks for watching